Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is change control. As a part of vernacular Telugu series, in this video, change control section 13 of ICHQ7 is explained on how scientifically and systematically it should be done. The intent of change control is explained here. Both ICHQ7 and Eudralex Volume 4 Part 2 prescribe the minute requirements in Section 13. Section 13.10 prescribes that there should be a well-defined system to address the completeness of justification for any change to an approved system. There is no provision in the guide to make any changes verbally. It is not acceptable for such verbal changes. Official approved system is similar to the constitution of a country which cannot be changed without any discussion, review before approval as per law. Section 13.11 prescribes that there should be a detailed procedure to identify the requirement for a change with scientific justification on the impact analysis on the outcome. The proposal for a change should be much before the change being implemented. The proposal has to be reviewed for impact on the product quality, approved and made official then only the changes should be implemented. It is important to have focus on the proposed change and full understanding on the potential impact on the product quality. Any changes in raw materials, specifications, test methods, plant equipment, utilities, process steps, Labeling and packaging schemes have to be approved officially before change implementation. The changes include GMP compliance too. All necessary objective evidences have to be provided for review and approval. Any supporting drawings for design changes, reduction on process cycle times, higher yields, etc. have to be submitted for review. The R&D and engineering teams may have to provide such data. How to address the change control is described in this slide. ICHQ9, the Quality Risk Management Guide, is very useful for such evaluation on impact on quality of the product. There are nine tools described in the guideline. FMEA, RFMECA, FTA, ASOP, filtering and risk ranking are routinely used for pharmaceuticals. In FMEA, risk is evaluated in qualitative way like low, medium or high. Whereas in FMECA, scoring is given for criticality of the risk C in FMECA. However, the outcome would be same in any case, you will get good results after a couple of attempts of evaluation through the uh, QRM guideline. Section 13.12 prescribes that the proposal should be identified, described in detail, reviewed at originators and for completeness of data and submitted to quality assurance function for additional review and approval for implementation of the change. It is the responsibility of the proposer that the change is as per the process requirement and meets all necessary GMP requirements too. This is important section. This section 13.13 .13 prescribes that 
it is necessary to highlight the advantage by the proposed change on the quality of the product. As a part of evaluation, it may be classified as minor or major. Minor means that there is no significant impact on the quality of the product. Major means it can impact the quality of the product significantly. Please note that the significant impact should be on the improvement side and not to deteriorate the product quality. Corrections of typo errors, reframing the sentences to be more effective, changes in formats, any changes to the like to like equipment to name a few. Please note that like to like means exactly same type of equipment. There is another classification called critical. This can also be considered as major for change control. Some examples of major changes are provided in this slide. Changes in raw materials, changes in quantity used in the process, any equipment changes, addition or deletion of the process steps, changes in specifications, test methods, or changes in the batch sizes, etc., to name a few. Section 13.14 prescribes to review the change for any additional validation requirements or subjecting the revised batch samples for stability study. Information on such aspects should also be part of change control proposal. It is necessary to look into the other documents that might undergo change because of the change. All these things should be part of the supporting documents for any change control. Section 13.15 prescribes that batches produced after implementing the change should be evaluated for expected improvement. All the evaluation should be done statistically. For statistical analysis, you need data from at least three batches. Data from more than three batches is also good if available. More the data, better the evaluation. All the data should be part of the annual product quality review document, which is called APQR. This section 13.16 describes that in the event of subjecting the batches from the revised process for stability study, it is necessary to evaluate what type of stability study has to be conducted. All the justifications should be scientifically explained. Also, any other additional study requirements have to be addressed. This section 13.17 prescribes that all changes have to be communicated to the customer and regulatory agencies. There are different types of communications like annual notifications, immediate notifications, minor, major, etc. The type of communication also depends on the regulatory agency. I hope the content of section 13 of ICHQ7 is explained well for Telugu viewers. Try to compare the Telugu text with original text of ICHQ7 and modify your change control system accordingly. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.